Hello, this is Andrew with a million dot bike, and this is the review for these Far Sports 35 mil road, road wheels. Uh, I've been putting it off, I've gotten a lot of questions around when it's going to come out, so decided it was time just to do it. Uh, I had been putting it off because I was hoping to get some real climbing in on the wheels. Uh, they should be perfect for that. Uh, generally in the May, June time frame, I get out to Colorado, spend some time out in the mountains with the 182-pound uh, pure climber. And it would have been nice to get his impressions as well because he's a bigger, more powerful rider. But unfortunately, with the uh, current situation, I have not been able to make that work. So, not going to punt anymore. Here we go. If you take nothing away from this review, then this is probably the most important thing, is that it's difficult to stress how amazing a value I think these wheels are. I think they're they're just brilliant. I mean, it's not to say that they're perfect. There are, there are some things that aren't perfect, and um, I'll get into that in a bit, but that's really the TLDR or TLDW, is that they are, for the money, just a brilliant set of wheels. And there are two things that surprised me the most about these wheels. One, that they're not very good at gravel riding. And when I bought them, Far Sports marketed them as a road and gravel wheel. Uh, they've, I think they've stopped doing that with the new set of wheels that came out. Um, I actually bought one of their new wheel sets. And uh, you should see a thing in the corner here for a link out to that one. And the reason why they're not great is because the engagement on the rear hub, the DT Swiss 350 here, it must be the 18. They don't really tell you how many teeth it has, but it has to be the 18 because it is pretty slow on the engagement. And if you were doing any kind of technical gravel riding, that would not be awesome. On the road, it's not a problem because it doesn't have to be quick to engage, but one nice thing about DT Swiss wheels is that if I really wanted it to change, to change that, I could. I could just change the, the pawls, I guess, the little cranky thing, gear thing that's inside the hub. Um, they're also not perfect for, or that suited for gravel because of the depth. You put a big gravel, big wide gravel tire on there, and you lose any of the aero benefit from going for a 35 mil versus a shallower wheel that's going to be lighter. So that's the two things. The second thing that surprised me is that how little compromise there is riding these wheels. I, you know, my other wheel set that I ride on the road is a 65 mil deep uh, Reynolds wheel set. I'm sure that they're faster over, you know, any kind of long distance, but you don't, I don't feel that ever. And I do feel the difference in weight when riding these versus the Reynolds wheels, you feel that. When you're accelerating, when you're going up what passes for hills out here in Illinois. And these guys, they just, they're, they're really responsive. They're really quick. And there's no... I would have no problem recommending these wheels as like a single wheel set for anyone. I've ridden a lot of miles on these. I've completed at least one solo century on these, and I've never felt like it was a hardship to have chosen these over the Reynolds, and especially if there's crosswinds, uh, which is why they're on the bike today, because it was supposed to be pretty crosswindy out here today. The tubeless performance is magnificent. These are the ones without um, holes in the bed. So with these Continental GP5000 TLs, they go on really easy. I've had zero issues with them. They hold air a lot better. And that could be a sizing thing where um, the Schwalbe's that I bought with these, the Schwalbe Pro 1, which is the older Schwalbe Pro 1 tubeless, I bought with these wheels from Wheelsfar. I couldn't even get them on the rim, but those Schwalbe tires 
slide on super easy on the Reynolds wheels, so it's quite possible that these are just slightly bigger than the Reynolds wheels, like the diameter is bigger, or the circumference, or actually would be both. Perfectly matched with these um, 25 mil um, GP5000s. And when you have the 25 mil GP5000s on here, they measure out to a little over 27 mil, so you still get a pretty good aero benefit. I mean, it would be nice if, <laughs> it actually would be nice if all the wheel manufacturers made their tires not puff out so much so that you could buy a 28 mil wheel set and the tire would, you buy a 25 mil tire and it measures 26 or something. That would be even better than what these are, but um, that's not really the fault of this wheel set. That's just me banging on about something. One of the things that you give up when you buy a Far Sports wheel set or Wheels Far wheel set is they don't have the warranty coverage that you're going to get if you go out and buy like a Reynolds wheel or an MV wheel or a Roval wheel. The Reynolds historically has always had a, a really generous warranty. Um, some of the other manufacturers have kind of moved into that space where you, if you're the original owner, you have a lifetime warranty for crashes and that sort of thing. And then some kind of shorter term, I think it's two years on Reynolds wheels for manufacturing defects where with the far sports wheels there is a warranty of sorts but it's not probably the most callous way to say it is it's not really worth the paper that it's written on there's exclusions all over the place one of the exclusions is that they they won't warranty the wheels if you ride them off road and if you're selling a gravel wheel set that's you know <laughs> kind of stupid um, but is it worth paying twice as much for a wheel set or three times as much for a wheel set to get a warranty that you may never use? I think probably not, but that's a, you know, a personal tolerance for risk kind of thing. So you kind of have to make that decision for yourself. The final thing to note is that I just love the way they look. Here they are on the tarmac, and I think they actually look better on the tarmac than they do on the air road, because the air road's a little bit more of an aero bike. But still, they look great. And I have no complaints at all with the way they look, with the build quality, um, one of the nice little touches. And I, I didn't notice this until later, was like, if you, I mean, I can't show it because it's really hard to see, but if you look, if you take the wheel off, or the tire off, and you look through this valve hole, the DT Swiss logo, right here, the 350 logo, is right there. And that's just like one of those little touches that is just... There's no compromise, really, when it comes to the build quality and um, what you get. And for, you know, I think the general price is about 700 bucks and I paid 600 something for them and yeah they're just an amazing amazing value I think that pretty much is all of the things I wanted to say about this uh, hopefully you found that useful if you did go ahead and like the video subscribe to the channel if you have any questions or comments or um, you think I missed something just drop it below cheers